So in your calculation section, you are asked to do two things. Calculate the mole percent oxygen uh, when you are saturated with water vapor. The other way of saying that is uh, wet gas. So calculate it as a wet gas, and then you're going to calculate it as a dry gas, subtracting out the water vapor. So here's our um, Right, and we have our little cork up here. And we had our liquid. Let's see, the 50 mark was like somewhere around here. Zero mark is somewhere around there. And you put your green liquid in. So we need to figure out first how much gas did we start with? How much gas was in that container? How much air? Right? So there are a number of ways you can do that because we took a lot of measurements. Um, I will do it one way, but there are other ways you can figure out your initial starting volume. I think for most of you, I told you to just fill this whole thing up, right, and then dump it in the graduated cylinder. So, what is this volume? Okay, uh, I'll just pick a, a Sylvia over here. Can you find that in your data? The volume of the... The whole volume here. I think okay. it's like 62 Well, this is at uh, the point where you confer with your lab partner to see if you can figure out where you wrote that down. Yeah, I know. We, we fill it up with liquid and then we dump it in the, the graduate so. Yeah, how much was in the graduate? Because we remember we filled it all the way up. We filled it all the way up, and then I said dump it out. Yeah. Everybody's is going to be different because. I think we got 57 milliliters of the mixture. Okay. That was what's in your big graduated cylinder. You're looking at me like you don't know for sure. Um, so, the thing about these things is they're all handmade. Um, the volume above here is not standard, and the volume below there is not standardized. So you can't just say that, oh, well, I'm going to have the same as somebody else's. So everybody else's initial volume is going to be different. So um, did you guys fill it all the way up and then dump it into your grad, that big 250 graduate? Like before or after? It doesn't matter. I'm asking yeah. you to fill it all the way up and then dump it into a graduate. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How much volume was in there? Uh, 57 milliliters. Okay. So, so if that's the volume, now again, everybody's is going to be different. So you fill this all the way up with liquid, right all the way up to there. And you had dumped into a graduate cylinder, that's, that means your burette has got a volume of 57 mils. Now, how much green solution was put in there? Ten, right? Because you had five mils of cobalt chloride and five mils of uh, ammonia. So that means that whatever this volume is right here, that's 10 mils. So I'm going to label my calculations nicely. And I'm going to say uh, the first thing is the volume of air initially is 57 milliliters minus 10. 
So the volume of air initially is 47 milliliters. So that tells me then this volume. Right, if the total is 57 and I added 10 mils of solution, that must mean then this, this volume here is 47. Right? The total minus 10 gives me the initial volume of gas up here. But that's not just air up there, right? You have water vapor up there as well. So you've got air and water vapor. Then you had your reaction, right? And the oxygen reacted with the cobalt chloride solution. So all the oxygen that was in here reacted and went into the cobalt chloride. And what happened to the volume of the liquid when you released the clamp? When you took the clamp off, the liquid went up higher, right? Yeah. The reason why the liquid went up higher is because if all the oxygen reacted, the pressure in here went down. So if the pressure went down, it's going to draw more liquid up in. Okay? So here's my 10 mil mark. Whatever this volume is, that's the volume of oxygen reacted. So it started down here, so the level started down here, and then the oxygen in here reacted, the pressure dropped, and then when you release the clamp, the water level shot up. So whatever this volume is, whatever that difference is, that's the volume of oxygen that disappeared. That's the volume of oxygen that reacted. So you wrote down this number, the whatever that level was. Okay? So what is that that initial level of the cobalt chlorides. So what was that on your burette? Uh, 43.5. 43.5. Okay. Then what was the final number? Um, 33.7. So then we're going to calculate the volume of oxygen. I notice here, Marcus, that I am labeling my numbers, right? Yes. Because I'm trying to prove something to you. I'm trying to prove to you the moles of oxygen. That means I have to do a proof, and therefore I have to show all my work. Otherwise, you're not going to believe me. And why should you?
So air is mostly nitrogen, right? So air is mostly nitrogen. You've got some oxygen. How can I find the total moles of gas initially? Well, if I got the total volume, okay, it doesn't matter that it's a mixture of gases. You got your volume. You got your temperature. What was the temperature of? 22.1? Pressure. Uh, 29.85. So why was it so important? To, um, well, initially we know the pressure, right? Well, we know the pressure at the end. The pressure inside here was the same as the pressure outside. You didn't have a cork on here, right? To start off with? Yeah. You didn't have a cork on there. So if I just put a cork on the top there, what's the pressure inside? Same as the pressure outside, okay? Okay, what's the pressure of air inside this container? Same as the air pressure. If I put a top on it, does that all of a sudden make the pressure go up? No, okay? So the air pressure, even though I put a cork in it, the air pressure is the same. Thank you. So the pressure is, what did you say, it was 29.85? Yeah. No, it was inches. Labeling, once again, it saves us from our doom. Inches of mercury. So what do we got to do, uh, Maggie? Convert it to millimeters. Um, we'll have to do that. But what's our end goal? What's the R value in? Or kPa's. Right? 8.31 liters kPa, small Kelvin. So that means our pressure has to be in. So we can first convert it to millimeters, like Maggie suggested. One inch, 2.54 centimeters. One centimeter is 10 millimeters. And 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to 101.325 kPa. You too one day will have that memorized. It should be pretty close to 101. Our air pressure here, we're almost at sea level. We're 340 feet above sea level, so. Yeah. We did have a weather front move in yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. It was nice and dry, and then it was all rainy. Yeah, I got you. And what are you doing, KPA and atmospheres? What is our R value in? Atmospheres or KPA. Yeah. If I'm using this one. Oh, all right. If you use this one, it has to be in KPA. All right. Three sig figs. Three sig figs, four sig figs, six sig figs. So three sig figs would be 101. KPA. Do you have a preference as to which R value you use? No, you could use atmospheres. You'll get the same answer. 
It's it's just usually in, in like chemistry usually use KPA. Atmospheres is more for um, space science.